Hey everyone, it's William Moore. You're watching Beyond the Ties That Bind. I hope that you're all having a great day. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to try and keep this brief. I'm going to try. Now, this. The House Democrats unveil a $2.5 trillion stimulus counterproposal. 1.5K direct checks to everyone. Now, did I not call this? Also a friend of mine, Clay Buller, he called it as well. That they were just going to keep piling the money onto this stimulus package, this coronavirus stimulus package. I stated it was going to $2.5 trillion or even higher. And here we have a headline. Democrats unveil $2.5 trillion stimulus counterproposal. Now, also in news, Pence echoes Trump, says U.S. will reevaluate stay-at-home order in two weeks. How about reevaluating it yesterday or last week and never even proposing it your socialistic martial law your communism you pence and trump can take your martial law and stick it where the sun don't shine ridiculous this is absolute communism what makes people think that there is a special class of people that have the right to rule over everyone else. Where does that type of thinking come from? People actually think that there is an infallible group that can do no wrong even when they do wrong, that they create the problem, then there's a reaction, then they provide the solution. And all's well, even though the solution is created to bring you into subjection to their rule. And that goes back to the problem they created. They create the problem so that they can reel everyone in and make everyone debt slaves. Bring everyone into servitude. What makes people think that someone else is cut from a finer clay than they are? That they can go around ruling other people? Making up laws, making up regulations. People, start to think critically. No one has the right to be an authoritarian over you. No one has the right to impose laws upon you. The only one that does is the creator, and he made things very simple. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Do no harm. If we all lived by that rule, then we could all have nice things. But the sheep will keep us from having nice things because they think that somebody has to rule over them. Okay. Orwell stated that truth is treason in the empire of lies. So, here we go again. Um... I want to read this from John Rappaport. He is the top. He is the best investigative journalist out there. I'm going to try and make this short. He released a uh, article today. Dr. Anthony Fauci is now the president of the United States, and I could not agree more. Trump is not president right now. Anyway, um, John Rappaport, the best investigative journalist out there. If you're not following him, Go to nomorefakenews.com. If you're not following John Rappaport, you are not getting the truth. Now, and I'm going to tell you this. If you want the truth, unplug from the mainstream media right now. Don't tune into the mainstream media. Don't watch your faux news, a.k.a. Fox News. Don't watch your MSNBC, your CNBC, your ABC, your CBS, your CNN, all the that alphabet stew of nothing more than lies. Unconnect from that and see how you feel after just about 48 hours of unconnecting from that BS. So anyway, uh, Anthony Fossey, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. In Fossey, we trust. The Daily Beast writes about Fossey as he guides the nation through the coronavirus crisis stands at the White House with President Trump and Vice President Mike Pence, introduces actual truth to the coronavirus briefings, Fossey has been in charge from the start.
The economic devastation now consciously set in place in the U.S. as a result of lockdowns will last how long? If Fossey and his cohorts at the CDC and the World Health Organization say two months, the devastation will be two months. If they say six months, it will be six months. If they say a year, it will be a year. Trump has no control, people. He's abdicated the throne to this man, Fossey. Fossey is the medical frontman. He announces how long the epidemic will persist. That, in turn, equals how long the lockdowns will persist, which in turn equals how long the smashing of the economy will go on. As president, Fossey trumps Trump. Trump has been put in a box, checked and double-checked. Uh, there's definitely been a difference in uh, Trump's whole demeanor since this thing started. But you can see that he has had to abdicate that puppet throne. So anyway, as I've been establishing in many articles, and that's John Rappaport, the epidemic itself is a misnomer. The dubious discovery of the new virulent virus. Worthless, deceptive, useless, diagnostic test for the coronavirus, rendering case numbers meaningless, people suffering from a variety of traditional disease conditions and several new non-viral conditions, all relabeled under the empty umbrella term COVID-19, the media pumping of fear, medical, public health authorities put in charge of national policy, escalating mass surveillance and social distancing, and therefore both the beginning of the epidemic and its end are mandated by arbitrary edict. Not science, not fact. In an expanding number of countries, we are looking at medical coup, palace revolution, Media are blaring coronavirus coverage wall to wall and repressing the full picture of the economic war against the people and its human cost. Workers living from paycheck to paycheck, laid off, rents not paid, businesses close, owners go broke, small investors lose their shirts, savings dwindle, public venues shut down. Picture this. In a small city, the university suspends classes. The majority of students go home. Overnight, all the money students would spend locally drains away. A week later, an order comes through. Restaurants and bars must close. Workers are laid off. The owners who were operating on small margins are squeezed to the hilt and beyond. There is a major tourist attraction in town, a theme park. It shuts down. Tourist trade which was already drying up, goes flat. A whole variety of shops shut their doors. Then, in order, non-essential stores must stop doing business unless they can somehow limit traffic to 10 customers at a time. A huge botanical garden and two museums close. Their employees are without jobs, and all this is just the beginning of the damage. The citizens themselves hunker down. They start abandoning their homes and moving in with friends and family, more people in smaller spaces, yet they try to practice social distancing. Hospitals in town are dealing with more and more people who come in with coughs, sniffles, ordinary flu, long-term lung conditions, and the belief they could be infected by the COVID-19 virus. Doctors are under the gun. They're forced to diagnose some of these people as presumptive COVID cases. That means general wards will not do because of the contagion factor. Such patients must be shunted into ICU, but there are not enough beds. Medical edicts run the whole country. This is not politics. This is science and concern and containment and healing, they say. No, this is a coup. This is an economic war, an attack on freedom. The front man, the president of the United States is Anthony Fauci. And in other countries, you have the same thing going on. We are being lied to. The economy is being destroyed. People are going to lose everything. More damage will be done by the reaction and overreaction to this virus than the virus itself. Yet the sheeple are, are just swallowing it hook, line, and sinker. And man, I'm telling you what. Mm, Barry, that, that socialism. I never thought I'd like socialism. But man, when Trump's 
bending me over that barrel. And he's giving me that socialism. I really like it. I like it a lot. Uh, man, I'm telling you, Trump, he, he's just so good with that socialism. Makes me feel so, so good, so loved. It doesn't hurt. I cannot, I mean, this country is lost, people. Unless people wake up, this country is lost, gone. Why? Because people sit in front of their television, they're part of the cult of personality, they cannot think critically, they're just, they're just a, you know, trapped in cognitive dissonance. They can't accept any new and challenging information. They can't accept something that goes against the mainstream narrative that they've been brainwashed to believe in. It's all cognitive dissonance. Unless people start waking up, it's lost. It's over. America, whatever bit of freedom that it had, it's gone. Because people follow their masters around. This orange man, they follow him around. And they let him do whatever he wants to do to them. And then he lets... Mr. Fossey do whatever he wants to do to us, these Trump followers, and they just take it. So, if you're going to continue taking it, you're going to get what you deserve. The rest of us, the rest of us who are awake, as I stated before, there is a quote by Frederick Bastiat. When law and morality contradict each other, the citizen has the cruel alternative of either losing his moral sense or losing his respect for the law. It's time to lose respect for man-made law and start breaking the law. Everyone, this is William Moore for Beyond the Ties of Bind. Love everybody out there. Shalom. Peace.